Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to another episode of the HR Chat Show. I'm your host today, Bill Bannum. And in this episode, we're going to discuss how to equip leaders with the knowledge needed to construct an organization where people are recognized as the primary driving force behind business success. My guest today is the awesome, fantastic, wonderful Rosa Trufanek, founder and CEO over at HR Hints, an HR boutique operating on a subscription model. Rosa is an HR expert with psychological and managerial experience who has led tech companies from early startup through exit. And Rosa is also the author of Culture ID, The Power of Changing a Workplace, and of course, the CEO over at Culture ID. Rosa, welcome to the show today. Thank you very, very much. I'm super happy to be here today uh, with you, Bill. Um, and thanks a lot for, for having me and looking forward to, to have a great conversation today. So, Rosa, beyond my wee introduction there, why don't you start by taking a minute or two and introducing yourself to our audience? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm coming from HR. So my background uh, is in psychology. Uh, I've studied 10 years, uh, five years on master's degree, uh, five years on PhD studies. And after that, also uh, performance studies and management. And after that, uh, I went to a recruitment agency. I was working as a talent partner. After that, I moved to startup environment, and I was so lucky to build startups to see uh, how they uh, go to uh, stock market, uh, how they fail sometimes. Uh, later on, I've started to work with uh, private equity uh, backed companies, uh, and what I've seen at one moment when I was working as an interim HR manager was the fact that uh, a lot of things, a lot of problems, a lot of challenges are repeated when we look at the companies and the fact that a lot of people in the C-level, founders or, or leaders uh, said that, okay, I, I just don't want to hire a HR manager. Uh, it must be you. You are the person I want to have in an HR manager or chief people officer role. And my main thought in these days was that it's not true, basically. Uh, I'm not like the magic sauce person, uh, you know, the, the, on, the one and only uh, that is able to, to lead HR in organization. Uh, this is a scope of skills. This is a scope of knowledge, this, the scope of behaviors and all the set. But it is possible to be written um, or operationalized and, you know, just tidied up. Um, so I decided to scale it. And uh, I decided not to work as a freelancer, as a one woman army, but in the long term uh, to build an organization. And um, luckily, we are in that moment uh, with HR Hints. So the company uh, I started uh, two and a half years ago, uh, that we are having 20 plus people on board and we are working in uh, 12 countries. We are having the team in, uh, in Poland. We are working uh, for UK. We are having the team in uh, in US as well. So we are working like pretty internationally uh, and it is scalable. And also that type of thinking that, okay, it must be you as my HR person is not valid anymore because I'm not realizing HR projects on my own, but we've written and we've built a methodology. So all the stuff that is repeatable and that we can say that, okay, it works for the company in that size, in that type, um, we can really implement it. And during because of the, of the scale we have, so currently uh, more than uh, 100 companies from different countries, uh, we see that it really, really works. So based on it, we've written a book uh, called, as you said, Culture ID, The Power of Changing a Workplace. Thanks for tuning in to the HR Chat Podcast. If you're enjoying this episode, we'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. And now, back to the conversation. Wowza, so you started the company two years ago and you're already at 20 employees, you're writing amazing books, you're doing pretty well, Rosa. 
congratulations. Uh, let's uh, let's now discuss some of the key points from your book, uh, Culture IV, The Power of Changing a Workplace. First off, Rosa, how do you perceive the relationship between business and HR, considering the equal triangle of products slash services, sales and people as the foundations? For a very long time, it wasn't as obvious as it is right now. So it was kind of opposition uh, between business and people in many organizations. And for now, it is changing, of course. And as we work with PE-owned um, companies, we see that in these more traditional companies, uh, this change is also having having a place in VC-backed companies, um, Basically, there are like tech companies, so it goes pretty, uh, pretty fast. But very often we've heard that, OK, business is revenue, business is operations, business is just the, the, the delivery. And people are, um, you know, about uh, Fruity Wednesdays, Chocolate Fridays and, you know, happiness officers taking care of them. And what we think and what we implement uh, is exactly the opposite. So we want to say that um, this conflict between uh, well, uh, well done business and taking care of people uh, is not true. So we are having this triangle, in fact. So we are having a sales, we are having product or services, and we are having people. And people are not a black box. People are uh, rather... Um, an area we can we can uh, tidy up all the processes, all the mechanisms regarding, for example, communication or giving and taking tasks from from employees. But implementing that type of solutions, especially when it comes to you know, the specific stage of growth, uh, we can really uh, make it like a business driven. Uh, goal, uh, not the separated uh, thing. And um, I think this is the, the highest time to, to say that this opposition between business and people is just coming up to end. And um, yeah, we are part of the change, definitely. Fidelo Inc. is a consulting firm specializing in improving human performance, and we're proud to support the HR Chat podcast. We help identify strategic competencies and behaviors that drive results. Our team offers an HR web software to manage systems, reports, and data for HR people that need the best insights to make the right decisions and achieve better results. Learn more at Fidelo.com. Now then, can you you maybe discuss your approach to analyzing and adapting HR processes based on the unique needs of different stages of, of a company's development? We are having uh, in Culture Ivy uh, book. You uh, you are able to to find them uh, as well. Uh, we are having a, a list of more than uh, seventy aspects of a healthy uh, organizational culture, and of course, not in every organization uh, it means the same. But to verify that, to check that, and to be able to describe it, you need to really name it. So we are using these four aspects to call it, to name them, and to verify how they are set up. So we are using that set of values, behaviors, practices, and interactions. So values, we are having like the general principles uh, of organization. Uh, Practices are the mechanisms and the regular very often repeatable um, rituals of organizations. So, for example, one-on-ones, weekly managers' meetings or leaders' meetings or all hands or town halls, so whole company uh, meetings, uh, skip-level meetings. So um, that type of routines that are supporting uh, the main goals and values of organizations. On top of practices, we are having behaviors. So what type of behaviors are acceptable uh, in organization and what are um, forbidden or what are not acceptable? And uh, very often we think like, okay, it's nice to be, um, I don't know, let's say transparent. Yeah, transparency is our value uh, at our company. Okay, but with no description of behaviors, it doesn't mean nothing, to be honest. So what exactly does it mean to be transparent? Does it mean that uh, I'm, as a CEO, reporting my every day of work or everyone knows how much I earn? Or what does it mean? 
Um, does the manager uh, reporting um, the activities to other managers? So what exactly um, we support, what type of behaviors we support or, and what are, what are not supported. Um, and on top of uh, these three, um, so let me remind you, um, values, practices, behaviors, are uh, interactions and interactions are just relations between people so we are not setting them up uh, they are rather like freely moving between people when when they communicate inside the organization but we can uh, shape them somehow so for example if we say that uh, we are um, working on specific arguments when we are discussing and suddenly we hear that someone is raising a voice and shouting at each other um it's time to react. And uh, very often, a lot of organizations and leaders in organizations, uh, they are not reacting because they don't know how to do that. And they think, okay, maybe I should do that offline, just on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and we say, no, um, it's the setting up the organizational culture. Because like the worst uh, accepted behavior in organization uh, is the border of the organizational culture. And so that's how we set up this mechanism. That, that's how we set up uh, the work, for example, because we are working as um, interim uh, HR managers. And that's also uh, how we described it in, uh, in Culture Ivy, using four uh, stages of growth of, of the companies. Considering the notion then that the people area within organizations is is not a black box, how should leaders ensure transparency and accountability in HR practices? What, what, what are some of those steps to ensure that the, the, the right conversations are had and everybody knows what's going on at all times? Depending on the stage um, on which they they are in the current moment, um, because as as I said, uh, we've uh, set it up four stages of growth of uh, companies, uh, depending on the number of people hired uh, for the company. Um, because what we've noticed, um, there are much more similarities between companies, even from different industries. So, for example, we are having um, medtech and fintech, and if they are hiring 50 people, both of them, they are much more similar uh, to each other when it comes to organizational challenges than uh, the medtech and the other medtech uh, having uh, 200 uh, people on board and um, the other one having 50 people on board. So the similarities when it comes to organizational culture uh, and challenges in uh, in the growth or, or in changes are rather regarding the size of the company and the number of people hired than the uh, the industry. So uh, that's pretty uh, pretty specific. And depending on the stage uh, when um, it, on which uh, the organization is um, currently uh, these challenges are, you know, are pretty pretty different um, that's why also we've described it in culture ivy like that that we are having three chapters and the first chapter is dedicated to leaders and founders because very often founders are having like a crucial input to um, to the final organizational culture even up to uh, 300 people on board um, we think like, OK, if we are hiring first managers, uh, they rather shape the organizational culture. And when we see the values defined by organization and the founder, even, as I said, up to 300 people on board um, are having like 90 percent of similarity between uh, values of founder and values of organization. So um, yeah, at the beginning, these different uh, these uh, challenges are uh, different, and as organization uh, grows, uh, they are also um, more into processes uh, regarding the second chapter. So as I said, chapter one is regarding um, challenges of leadership, founders, and leaders. And the second chapter uh, is about people and culture. So building organizational uh, communication, building processes, building mechanisms, describing them. Uh, and the third chapter uh, is regarding the talent. Uh, talent, so talent acquisition, uh, building the teams, uh, inviting new people to, to the team, tidying it up and doing it in the, in the best possible way. Okay, let's just continue down that route for a moment. Uh, talk to us a bit more about your 
approach when it comes to building processes per stage rather than per industry, especially in diverse sectors like medtech and fintech. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's quite a surprisingly thing for for many founders when when we say about that that uh, they are much more similar to each other, for, as you said, medtech and fintech, for example, than uh, companies on different uh, different stages. So uh, at the first stage, um, so uh, up to uh, twenty uh, people uh, on board, uh, we are having the team. Uh, Led by founder, um, led by founder, by group of founders, very very often, uh, and this communication is really basic. So we don't need any uh, advanced processes, uh, and also very often we are having at that stage we are having first managers who are uh, leading the teams, and uh, the, the the first challenge from the HR from the HR perspective is when we have first managers in organization who are leading teams but they are not founders themselves so um, transferring or delegating let's say um, the organizational culture and values from founders to people who are not founders is the crucial thing so that's the big challenge of the first of the first stage, and of course, uh, talent acquisition uh, challenge uh, challenges. So all the stuff regarding not hiring your best colleagues from university, uh, not hiring your friends and your family, but verifying these people are they able to to do the job, and after that, verifying if your founder, if your co-founder, if your first leader or your hired people are able not only to deliver on their own, but how you set up the way uh, you um, uh, how you set up the way they deliver, uh, because very often when you scale, and there, that's are also the most common challenges of the uh, second and third stage. So uh, growing uh, from uh, 20, 25 people um, to fifty or even uh, up to one hundred, uh, when we see that um, delivering is the biggest problem, and the effectiveness are huge problems as well, uh, because Managers and founders very often are giving the work, but they are not able to take these tasks or t- take dep- department um, areas to, to to be led, depending on on the responsibility. But so they give work, but they don't take it back, um, and very often they are not able to give feedback. They differ when it comes to uh, the growth uh, stage of their leadership skills. So these challenges are the most common when it comes to um, the second, uh, the second and, the, uh, and the third stage. And the third stage uh, is the most challenging and that's typical for, you know, for growing organization that uh, the communication really needs to be changed uh, because that way of letting someone know how does it work that, for example, okay, something is changing and doing it in a kitchen or just, on the last three minutes of the call is not enough at that stage uh, because we are having um, you know, 100 people or more uh, and we need to uh, have the policies, we need to uh, have the regular reporting, we need to have the regular flow of communicating, sending emails using communicators like Slack or Teams or whatever. And we really need to uh, be strict and really tied up to uh, to that rhythm of communication because rhythm at that growth stage is is everything um and the fourth one uh very strong leadership team uh, at the fourth stage in in our methodology is just giving and giving back or delegating all the responsibility from founders to to leaders and not being able to make important decision on his or her own uh, when it comes to CEO position and uh, scaling what's good in organization, but still being able to scale the good culture. So uh, all the, you know, regarding all these um, aspects, uh, as, as we mentioned, these four, um, these four elements. So all these aspects regarding acceptable behaviors and forbidden behaviors, as well as practices, uh, they are like absolutely crucial at that stage. So um, these are like main um, main uh, points of every stage, but of course uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of them. So uh, for much more, I invite you to uh, to culture ID book.
Wonderful. We're almost out of time already, Rosa. Two last questions for you. The first of those two questions is what else? And what I mean by that is um, what, what else have we not covered yet in terms of amazing reasons why HR folks and leaders should get a copy of your book? What, what else is it in there that we haven't spoken about yet that you'd like to highlight? But I'm going to challenge you to, to answer that in 60 seconds or less. Go. Ahead. So the main thing um, I'd like to you to to remember dear listeners is the fact that it's a business book it's a business driven book uh, because uh, it's highest time for hr to sit uh, at the decision table with other c levels and that book is the best tool for it in in my opinion because it shows how does it work uh, when people are helping business growth and they are helping each other and themselves growth as well Oh, gosh, you had about 10 seconds to go. Well done. Well done. Wow. Um, okay. For, <laughs> finally, today, Rosa, how can how can our listeners uh, connect with you, learn more about HR Hints, and of course, get a copy of your book? Um, we are at Amazon uh, with uh, Culture Ivy. So if you uh, tap in Culture Ivy, the power of changing a workplace, or just Culture Ivy and Amazon, uh, we are there. So uh, grab your copy uh, from, from this place. And we are also having websites, uh, cultureivy.io and hrhens. Dot io uh, and of course uh, social media um, facebook linkedin um, or pri- my personal one and our companies as well so see you there see you there indeed rosa this has been a lovely conversation thank you very much for your time today and thank you for being my guest thank you very very much for having me it was a pleasure and listeners as always until next time happy working Thanks for listening to the HR Chat Show. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette. And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.